dried shiitake mushrooms are one of my absolute favorite ingredients because of just how versatile they are. You can let them soak and reconstitute, and that soaking liquid can be used to flavor dishes just like a stock can. Alternatively, you can also toss them in soups to give quick broths a level of depth and richness that you'd otherwise need, like, a whole day of simmering to accomplish. And that's not even to mention the mushrooms themselves, which have got this deep flavor and a meaty-like richness that you just can't really get from fresh mushrooms. Because sort of like tinned tomatoes, shiitakes are picked in season, and the very best ones are saved for drying. So it ends up being an ingredient that wouldn't be out of place at a bougie seafood banquet, but also is absolutely something that normal people in normal villages would cook with in order to make something nice, though historically speaking, a special occasion kind of thing. But even outside of Guangdong, you see dried shiitakes all over East Asia, and is, I think, an awesome ingredient to have around no matter where or what in the world you're cooking. So, let's teach you how to use these guys as a stock replacement first. Now, no matter what usage you're going to be going for here, you'll first need to reconstitute your shiitake mushrooms. Easy enough, just takes a little time. First, just give your mushrooms a good wash to get out any stray schmutz, then toss those in a bowl and soak with cool water. The time needed to soak is going to be at least 6 hours and up to 24. So if you're planning on using them for dinner, just do this step in the morning before work or even the night before. Then, after that time, you just squeeze out the shiitake, slice out the stems, and definitely reserve that liquid. Because at this point, this is all basically ready to use. You can slice up the mushrooms and add them to stir fries, or you could take that soaking liquid, use it as stock, or some kind of combination thereof. We've used this use shiitake for flavoring move like a million times on this channel before, so we'll link a little playlist down for you in the description. But to illustrate the point today, we wanted to show you how to make a basic Cantonese braised shiitake sauce that I think is a super useful recipe to have in your back pocket. It makes for an awesome easy mixed noodle or an impressive looking topping for blanched vegetables. So, to make it, over a medium low flame, toss in two tablespoons of lard to a pot or alternatively peanut oil if you're keeping veg. Then just go in with an inch of smashed ginger together with the white portion of two scallions and fry those till fragrant, about 30 seconds. Then swap the flame too high, toss in your reconstituted shiitake mushrooms, and after another 30 second mix, swirl in a tablespoon of Liaojiu aka Shaoxing wine. Another brief mix, then go in with two cups of your shiitake soaking liquid together with the remainder of your scallion greens tied in a knot. Bring that all up to a boil, then down to a simmer. Season with a half teaspoon sugar and a tablespoon half of oyster sauce. And again, feel free to use a vegetarian oyster sauce for the vegetarians in the room. Then let that cook and reduce over a medium low flame for 45 minutes. Covered if you're in a wok like us, or with the lid ajar if you've got something tighter fitting. After that time then, remove the ginger and the scallion and then transfer the dried shiitakes over to a serving bowl. You should be looking at roughly one cup of liquid left, so thicken that up with a slurry of a half tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with an equal amount of water. But because reduction is not a science, definitely add more slurry if you need, and then taste your sauce. Depending on your reduction, you might not need anything else, but today we added another eighth teaspoon of salt. Then just pour that finished sauce all over the mushrooms, and with that, you've got yourself a braised shiitake sauce. Now, to eat this as a noodle topping, in Guangdong this is generally served with lo mein. To make it, what you'll do is first oil some cooked noodles, these guys were fresh alkaline noodles but use whatever, with a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil or melted lard if you prefer. Then you'll top it with a tablespoon of oyster sauce, a lo mein staple, together with about three tablespoons of your braised shiitake sauce. The quantity we made in this video should be good for four 100 gram bowls of noodles, and the mushrooms themselves you just kind of munch on as a side. To use this as a vegetable topping then, we just blanched one small head of broccoli in some bubbling water together with a teaspoon of salt and oil for two minutes, then strained and arranged on a plate to make everything pretty and banquety. Basically just broccoli outside facing out with a small pile in the middle to give a bed of sorts for the mushrooms. Then just toss your shiitakes on, pour that sauce all over everything, and you've got yourself a vegetable. So then, that brings us to use number two, how to use dried shiitake for soups. Now, in Chinese vegetarian cuisine, dried shiitake tends to be a foundational element in soups and stocks. 
So if you're in the market for something like that, definitely check out our old recipe for Cantonese Supreme Vegetarian stock up here. But for today, we just couldn't help but want to show you this dish, a hyper-classic chicken and shiitake soup that might actually be like a top five most common soup throughout China. To make it, we'll only need three dried shiitakes this time, though obviously washed and soaked just like before. Then, the next day, to a pot of a liter and a half of cool water, toss in your shiitake soaking liquid, about a cup, a half a chicken cleaved into two inch pieces, and your soaked shiitake mushrooms, but this time we'll also be tossing in the stems for good measure. Then, aromatics wise, we'll also go in with an inch of smashed ginger, together with a quarter teaspoon of barely cracked white peppercorns, and in a perfect world, we'd also add in a couple dried red dates here too, but we blanked and forgot to pick some up. But either way, just cover that all up and let that simmer over a medium low flame for 90 minutes. Then after that time, just season to taste, which was for us a half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder. And just like that, your soup is done. Just a simple tasty soup to serve alongside and complete a larger meal. Then. Last dried shiitake usage, using them straight up as an ingredient because, again, they're pretty delicious in and of themselves. You can famously see these in dishes like Lotus Pond Stir Fry or the ever popular abroad Buddha's Delight. But today we wanted to show you one of our personal favorites, a Hakka style stuffed shiitake mushroom with minced pork. With this usage though, after the requisite soaking and squeezing, you'll also want to marinate your mushrooms to give things a sort of base flavor. So for eight mushrooms, this was a quarter teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon sugar, an eighth teaspoon white pepper powder, and a half teaspoon of soy sauce. Just mix well and set that aside. Then next, the filling. This here was a mix of 150 grams of lean pork together with 60 grams of pork fat. The fat will cut into a fine dice like so and set it aside and then mince up the lean into a paste. That's it. If you prefer, definitely feel free to use a food processor for this kind of job. We always kind of struggle to get people to hand mince on this channel. And you could also maybe make do with something like a 95.5 and just use cleavers to finish the job. Either way, once you get something tasty like this, toss it in a bowl. Then to that mince, just toss in a half teaspoon of salt together with one egg white and start stirring. Our goal here is to develop the myosin in the pork to get something with a bit of spring to it sort of akin to a sausage. So once that's combined, start to drizzle in 40 grams of ice water, going in bit by bit, stirring vigorously as you go. Then after about five or six minutes of all that, go in with a slurry of a half tablespoon cornstarch mixed with an equal amount of water and give that a final couple minutes of stirring. At this point, dat your mixture by slamming it down against your bowl about 10 times or so. And then we can season quarter teaspoon sugar, quarter teaspoon white pepper powder, half teaspoon liaojiu aka shaoxing wine, half teaspoon soy sauce, quarter teaspoon dark soy sauce for color, and stir that all up again. Then at this point, toss in your fat, a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil to coat, and then this is ready to stuff in some mushrooms. So to help the filling stick, first sprinkle about an eighth teaspoon of cornstarch over each shiitake and rub it in, really making sure to get all those ridges. Then. To that, add about a tablespoon of your filling onto the mushrooms, smoothing things out to get something attractive and meatball looking. Work through your mushrooms, and then these can steam. So high flame toss in the plate, cover, and steam it for five minutes. Then after that time, just take those out, and then these are ready for sauce. So basically similar sort of flavor as the braised shiitake from the first recipe. Medium low flame, just toss in about a teaspoon of peanut oil or lard and fry up some ginger and scallion whites until fragrant. Then swirl a teaspoon of soy sauce together with a half cup of your shiitake soaking liquid. Once combined, remove those aromatics and season that all with a quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon sugar, eighth teaspoon MSG, and an eighth teaspoon white pepper powder. Drizzle in a slurry of a teaspoon of cornstarch mixed with a bit of water, and once thickened to your liking, drizzle that all over the stuffed shiitakes. Sprinkle over a bit of the scallion greens for garnish, and your stuffed mushrooms are also done. So for mushroom stems, uh, usually we just cut it off and kind of toss it, but you can always just save it and freeze it and use it to flavor your soups or stock. And some people even just save it and turn it into some kind of vegetarian jerky. 
Right, so check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.